Hey guys, AP here, and today we are going to be uh, adding image loading using STB instead of Slick Utils today. So, what we have currently is we have uh, using uh, Slick Utils to import our images so we can load them up to our model, which you can see right here. It does a good job, like, it does do a good job at loading it, but uh, Slick Utils is not being used anymore. Uh, it's, uh, it's actually out very outdated because it was used for it is involved with the second version of Lightweight Java Game Library, not the third version. The third version uses uh, STB, which uh, if you know what that is, then you would know it's uh, being uh, updated more than Slick Utils. Actually, Slick Utils is not even being used anymore by most people. So what we're going to do is we're going to transfer our things over from Slick Utils to STB and then after we do that we are going to go to Window and add uh, icon images and cursor images to it. So let's get started. So the first thing we got to do is we got to introduce another class uh, called the image class which is the image class. It's, light, it's an image loader class and it holds information. So Here's the image class. It has get image, get width, and get height. So we can load that to our uh, texture ID. It has a function called load image, which uses uh, STB to load image from a path. And so I'm going to describe this real quick. So we have the byte buffer, which is a long array of an image, and it describes the image like what pixel you're at, what how many how much color of red, and all that. So we have the uh, width and height, which you know, I'm not going to change that. I, I already accidentally did all that crap. <laughs> so, and then so we have a uh, stack so we can, uh, you know, delete the image whenever we want to. And then we have three int buffers because apparently uh, STB can't use normal ints, they have to use buffers. And so we have. Um, an image, which is which is the byte buffer, and then STB loads it from the path with the width and with the width, and it stores it in these three uh, buffers, and it uses four channels: red, green, blue, and alpha. Just in case there's any alpha on here. So now, what we if it's like if it couldn't find the image, then it will it will say couldn't load, and you'll see what it couldn't load. So then in sets the width and height to whatever and the width and height and then it returns this class again but with the information so we can use these three functions up here so now our material we want to get rid of all this we want to start we want to start over so we don't need any of this anymore and get rid of slick and so now we have to say uh, texture ID is equal to gl uh, gen textures, which will just make a spot for this texture. So then after we do that, then we want to bind it to it to make it a, a 2D texture. So we need to do gl uh, bind texture. So we need to put in what type of texture we want, which is a uh, texture 2D, and then what bind it to which ID, which we want to do, texture ID. So now, whatever we put in the next lines will be part of this texture ID. So the first thing we got to do is we have to uh, make some parameters for this so it uh, knows what to do. So the first parameter is gl uh, text parameter i. So the first thing is uh, we need to do which type of texture, which is GL texture 2D. So 2D. The first one is what you want to enable or dis or what you want to change. So or the second one, if you're looking at this from a different way. So GL. We want to change the. It's what is it? I know what it's called, but I forgot like what the last one is min we want to change the filter so after 
what we need to change the filter to is linear, so it uses uh, the pixels around it to make it uh, smooth. So if we use nearest, we would have to uh, add MIP mapping, which we won't do till we get to UV. If we're gonna do, uh, if we're gonna use GL11 uh, nearest, then we would have to enable MIP mapping, which we won't be using until we want uh, lights and all of this fancy stuff. And so I think that would be part of the advanced engine series that I'm thinking about doing after we get all the basics done on here. And because this is just a normal game, it's probably going to be like a, a 3D like top-down view. I don't know what it would be, but it will be like it will be something simple so you guys can make your own games. So then we need to say GL linear linear and we can just copy and paste this instead of min we're going to use mag which is basically the max but it's mag for some reason i don't know the specific reason why and so after we do that we need to uh store in our uh image which we need to create the image so after we do uh after we do create our texture id we need to say image uh texture or yeah, texture is equal to image dot load image. And since we have our uh, constructor uh, right here, and that takes in a file, we just have to define where that file would be, which would be in our resources and then in our textures, and then plus file name. So now that we have loaded our image, we can go to down here and we can actually store the image into our texture ID. So we can do gl uh, text uh, I forgot what it was I think it's text image it has to be text image okay yes yeah, text image okay so we can do that so the target will be uh, which type of uh, texture we want to draw which is uh, the texture 2d the level is uh, I think it has something to do with uh, Photoshop and like all the layers, but I'm not for sure, but it's going to be zero because it's the first layer. So the internal format would be uh, what type of image is this? Is this like, does it have, what type of channels does it use? So uh, uh, we said in our image class that it uses four channels, red, green, blue, and alpha. So in here we say gl eleven dot gl rgba, which means red, green, blue, and alpha. So the width is just the image width. So we can just do image dot get or texture texture dot get width, and then we in height it's the same thing texture dot get height border. If you want to border around it, which we don't, we're just gonna do zero. Format. This is what the graphics, the OpenGL sees. So we can just do the same thing as before. Uh, RGBA, and then type. Uh, what do you want to use? What type of like array is the data, which is pixels? And we said it was a byte, uh, byte buffer, so it'd be an unsigned byte. So G. Oh crap. GL11. GL unsigned byte and so the final uh argument is like what's the uh, data which is image or texture dot get image and so after all that we finally need to close out our uh texture so gl uh bind texture and then we do tech uh wait no we do gl 11 dot gl uh, texture 2d and then we just say zero to unbind our texture so now this should be our material class done we can go to um, main and everything should just be the same there we go so nothing's different uh, but like nothing's different graphically but now uh, we can use STB instead of slick utils which is a whole lot easier for the GL11 
GLFW because since Slug Utils is not used uh, anymore by Lightweight Java Game Library and instead STB, we can go here and we can load it into our icon and cursor. So we need to create two uh, uh, class variables. We can do private GLFW uh, image and we can do uh, cursor and then we need to do private glfw image dot buffer and then uh, icon so let's import those two things so let's just create some uh, new functions of set uh, set set icon and that's going to be a path and also set uh, set what is it uh, cursor cursor and so we're just going to do set icon first put input a path to where your icon is and then let's start so the first thing we need to do is we need to uh, load our image so we need to do image image uh, icon is equal to image dot load image and then we're going to do it in the same folders uh, textures uh, you don't have to do it in textures, I'm just going to do it for convenience, so because uh, I already have an image in textures, beautiful. I'm just going to use it for both cursor and icon for right now. And so after we do that, we need to do, uh, since this icon, we need to do glfw image icon image. That's going to be equal to, uh, I think it's memory... What is, what is it? G L oh, it's glfw image dot cut malloc, and then it's just normal because we already claimed that space, and then we do uh, icon. Oh wow! Oh wait, we have to do icon buffer. So I'll go back up here, and I'll just use buffer, and then buffer for this one because that's going to have the same issue. So icon buffer is equal to uh, glfw uh, image dot malloc uh, one. So that's going to be normal, and that's going to be that. So after we do that, we need to store our image into the image, or into the glfw image, and then after we store that, we can do. Uh, which is it set so now we can do uh, icon of oh crap so uh, icon dot get width icon dot get height and icon dot get image and so after we store our uh, this image into this image, we can now store the icon image into the buffer, which then we can use in the create function to create our icon. So icon uh, buffer dot which uh, dot uh, uh, dot what is it? I think it's set. I'm gonna find or put yeah it's put so icon of it in which we want to put in the first uh, index and we need to put in the icon image so after we do that we have set our icon buffer and so we can copy and paste this and put it in our cursor and we're just going to change a few things around uh, first of all string uh, path so now instead of icon it's cursor and for cursor we don't have to have uh, a buffer all we have to have is just the image so we can just say uh, get rid of all that cursor buffer and that's equal to that so now instead of this we can do cursor buffer is equal to all this we can delete this bottom line we can copy this and put it in icons place and that should be it for the cursor. So now we go up to uh, create 
and we're going to do this uh, right here. So we're going to say, or after we show our window, or before it, if um, cursor, cursor, buffer is not equal to null, which we need to set that and construct after, then we need to create the cursor and put it as our current cursor. So uh, long uh, cursor is equal to glfw dot glfw create cursor, which we need to use cursor buffer, and we don't have any uh, offset, so we just put in zero zero. You can put in any offset if you want to put the icon in the center, but I won't. So after we create that, we just need to set that equal to current window set cursor, which we need the window and we need the cursor. So there we go. Now let's just go up to constructor and set the uh, cursor buffer uh, equal to null. And so it'll, so what we do here is this is, excuse me, this is set to null. So just in case that this uh, function isn't ran, it detects that it nothing has happened and it just skips it. So we can do the same thing for the icon. So icon buffer not equal to null. But we don't have to create an icon, it just, it takes the buffer straight up. So, uh, set window icon. And then we have window function and then icon buffer. And so, that should be it. Now we just need to set the icon buffer to null. And we can, uh, set these things in our main class. So now we got finished with all the transferring, we can now go here. And this has to be called before the create function or um, or nothing will happen. Well, I might have to go to update and actually add that. So you can just control C and then control V. And we just get here, put you here. And so it could be ran anywhere now. And it would be set, but to, for organizational purposes, I'm just going to put it before the create. So, window dot, dot, dot set icon, and then the path, which is going to be uh, beautiful, dot png, and then we're just going to copy and paste this and set, and, and, and say set cursor instead of uh, set icon, so cursor. So what this should do is in the corner you should see a minified version. <laughs> you saw a little sneak peek of the cursor, a middle minified version of the image. And down here in the taskbar, a little cursor. But then when I put my cursor on the screen, <laughs> you're going to see <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a bit weird, but I, I know. So there is a couple of things wrong with this. First of all, it's flashing. Now, you wouldn't be able to see this if it's just a normal cursor because uh, this image is such a big image for a cursor that it isn't expecting it to take as long to load. So you actually get to see like parts where the, the image is not loaded in. So since cursors aren't supposed to be this big, they're probably not going to have this error. Uh, so yeah. Now... We have our icon setter, we have our cursor setter, and we have moved over from Slick Utils to STB. Uh, so yeah, that should be it for, for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, um, the next tutorial will probably be about uh, fixing uh, or adding some input for the mouse and making it resizable and full screen, the window class, so we can easily set our easily resize our window without any errors and we can uh, full screen our window without any errors so yeah uh, but that'll be the next tutorial so this is the end of this tutorial so i'll see you in the next tutorial bye